All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going to be going over every single package that you can install on a Synology NAS via the Package Center. Technically, it's not even gonna be all of them because if you are okay trying out some things that are a little bit more risky, there are unofficial Synology community packages that you can also add in here and install. I probably would not do that unless it's like on a virtual machine or something, or really just a bench you're down to just play around with, just because, well, Installing something as a package gives it a lot of access. If you wanna try out different things, Docker is much better for that because it's a lot more secure because it does not have kernel access. They're really kind of like segregated off as much as possible. And so it's generally a safer way to do it. Just wanna get out of the way, but we're going to be over, over all of the official packages as well as the ones that they're contributed to. And right now I'm running the Synology DSM 7.2 beta. And so we're gonna see that a lot of the packages are in beta but we'll be able to go over all of these. I'm going to very quickly run through some of them and then spend some time on the ones that are actually a lot more useful because a lot of the stuff that is available can be very niche and not really useful for the vast majority of users, whereas some things are incredibly useful and everybody should be installing it. So we're gonna run through all of them. All right, so right here, I've opened up the package center and you can see that our all packages is pretty small. That's because we're also gonna be going over the beta. And so we're gonna go ahead and start with the Synology packages and then go down into the beta packages and then come back to the contributor packages. All right, so first off, we have the C2 Identity Edge Server. This is pretty basic. Essentially what it allows you to do is authenticate. If you're using C2 Identity, you have a local server here. It is Synology's like basic authentication, kind of like an LDAP server. Probably not gonna be used by most people. Though if you are trying to do like single sign-on stuff in your business and you've got, you've got a large enterprise, you may be setting up. I've not seen a lot of people who have used it yet though, and it is just now rolling out. Next up is SAN Manager. SAN stands for Storage Area Network. And essentially what this allows you to do is create iSCSI LUNs. And so if you don't know what iSCSI is, essentially think of it kind of like a virtual hard drive. So you know how you can connect to shared folders on your NAS and multiple people can edit documents on there? It's not really acting as a hard drive as much as a file repository. When you set up a SAN or an iSCSI LUN, you are basically setting up a virtual hard drive that another computer can access. So only one person and only one computer will be able to access it at a time, but it does have some performance benefits for some specific workflows. And you can even do things like run an entire computer's operating system, so your Windows C drive, off of the NAS. And so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that, and you can have virtual machines but it's really more for kind of more advanced setups and really virtual machines is where most people are gonna be using them. Surveillance station, if you've not seen this before, it essentially allows your Synology to turn into a surveillance station. It allows you to record a bunch of different cameras that are all on your network and be able to play them back and it's got a really nice interface. This is one of very few Synology packages that ha actually has a license associated with it where every single NAS, except for the actual surveillance NASs that are specially designed for it, start with two licenses. Then every additional license, and the license is per camera, is a $50 lifetime license cost. But the great thing about that is you can migrate them in between units, so that is nice. But if you wanna turn your NAS into what's called an NVR, you use Surveillance Station. Universal Search is another one that is auto-installed and you don't really have an option to uninstall it. And that is essentially a search index built up for any files you wanna choose. So universal search allows you to specify shared folders and it will index either just file names or even file contents for very rapid finding. This is a great package to work with. If you often are trying to figure out where something is on the NAS, you can search on here incredibly quickly and find it. And it's got a lot of great options there. So it's got a ton of really good filtering and it can be very quick. Most people never actually use it, though it can be very useful. Then Universal Viewer is nothing you need to worry about. It is an add-on package that other packages use to have specific formats to view. Don't worry about it, it's auto-installed, but you can't really interact with it anyway. And finally, before we go on to the beta packages, there's Python 2. So technically by installing this, you will be able to actually run Python commands via SSH, but really what this is used for is actually the inner workings of the NAS and another way of Universal Viewer where the NAS is using it, you don't necessarily directly use it. Though technically, if you want to, you can try out and play around with Python on your NAS. So now before we go to the contributor ones, we're going to run into the beta packages because that's the vast majority of them, just because right now I'm running Synology 7.2 beta. 
All right, so starting off, we've got the four active backup packages. And the very first one is the, by far the most used, and that is Active Backup for Business. Active Backup for Business allows you to back up pretty much any device to the NAS. So if you wanna back up your computer, if you wanna back up your server, if you wanna back up your file server, if you wanna back up your virtual machines, if you wanna back up another NAS, you can pretty much always back it up using Active Backup for Business. It's got a ton of functionality. I've got a video on it, check it out. It is a very, very, very useful package and you can do a ton of things. It is license free and allows you to back up pretty much anything under the sun. It is awesome, especially for businesses, though home users can absolutely use it as well. Then Active Backup for Business Agent for DSM is what you install on a NAS that you want to back up using Active Backup for Business. So on your main NAS, you would install Active Backup for Business. And then on the NAS you want to back up, you will install Active Backup for Business Agent. And that will allow that NAS to be backed up using Active Backup for Business. Next up, we've got Active Backup for Google and Active Backup for Microsoft 365. I'm gonna talk about these in tandem because they essentially allow you to do the exact same thing. They allow you to either back up your Google Workspace or your Microsoft 365 entire accounts. And so this includes everything. It's a phenomenal package. And once again, is license free and something that is overlooked by a lot of organizations where you would be paying like three or $4,000 a month for a large organization to actually get this as a service. Whereas if you just buy a NAS, you can get that for free. It is a huge and very useful thing. But what it allows you to do, it allows you to back up users' profiles, their mail accounts, their calendars, their documents via either Google Drive or OneDrive. Really, pretty much everything involved in the actual ecosystem, you can back up. And it also has a lot of really great features, like the ability to keep previous versions of files. And so even if a begrudging employee deletes all their emails before quitting, you can go in and recover all those things. It is great. You should definitely take a look at it if you're running a business and you need to be able to back up one of those two because it is also license free. Awesome things to check out. Next up is Active Insight. Active Insight is another package that you can uninstall. And all it does is it basically has an interface so that you can go to the Active Insight website and be able to see a bunch of metrics from your NAS. DSM 7.2 is getting a lot of features with that, including ransomware detection. And so there's going to be a lot more in that, but it allows you to essentially be able to track a lot of metrics and it's really designed more for having large organizations who have 50 NASs or a bunch of NASs be able to detect them all. Though I would recommend most home users, you get three free licenses. I would recommend most home users sign up for it because it gives you mail notifications for critical events that you might not have if your Gmail account gets unlinked, which can happen. Next up is Advanced Media Extensions. This is essentially H.265. I think that's really all that's actually in here. Pretty much everybody should just install it by default. It's another package that all other packages actually use, but it gives you the ability to play back video files that otherwise might not be able to be played back. So it's another one of those that actually has a license associated with it. You don't have to pay it, but Synology does because H.265 is actually kind of expensive. And so they force you to actually install it and you actually have to be signed in with Synology to be able to even download this. So this is one of those ones just because there is a license associated with it. Next up is something you should not install, antivirus by McAfee. It, they're, they're gonna try to get you to pay money when you don't need to pay it. So I would skip this, it's antivirus. And if you want antivirus, you should run antivirus essential, which is actually pretty decent. Your NAS is very unlikely to actually get a virus in and of itself because there's very few packages that you can install. The only time that that's really the case is if you start like adding in unofficial package stores and things like that. But for the most part, the NAS itself is really not gonna be the one that gets a virus. Generally, it's a files on the NAS that may contain viruses. And so antivirus essential essentially does a scan and can find files that may have viruses associated with them. It takes a long time and I would not run it on a file server that you need really good performance on but it's not a bad idea to install and run a scan every once in a while. If you just wanna see anything, especially if you're a business and you wanna make sure that people are not accidentally like downloading and saving viruses to the actual server, it does a pretty good job and it's totally free. Apache is just an add-on package for your web server. So if you're running your website and it needs to run on Apache, you can install this and then use WebStation to interface with it. AudioStation allows you to have a okay app that allows you to play music 
So you basically upload files to the music folder and you can either play them via your web browser or you can also like play them on your phone, things like that. It's very similar to Video Station, but for Audio Station. Bitdefender is antivirus for mail. So if you're running a mail server, which I probably would not recommend doing unless you really know what you're doing, I would not install this. It's basically just a add-on for your mail server. CMS or central management system allows you to control multiple Synology NASes from one interface. So you can essentially have one master server and then everything reports back to it. And so you can configure a bunch of NASes all at once. I tend not to recommend this unless you've got like seven or more NASes just because it's clunky to set up. But if you've got to do a ton of things, it can be worth it. CloudSync, really great package with a couple of key flaws, but CloudSync allows you to take data from pretty much any cloud provider, Dropbox, Google Drive, you name it, it's probably there and can be extended with WebDAV. So pretty much anything can do it. And you can sync it to your NAS. So this can be one of three syncs, either bi-directional, where a file change in either one will get uploaded to the other, or just download only or upload only. Really great, has a couple of weird things about it, and I'll talk about that in a future video. Container Manager, this is also Docker on previous versions of DSM. Container Manager allows you to run Docker, which essentially allows you to run 8 billion other apps. So if you're looking to run a Docker container, you're gonna be using it via Container Manager, and this opens up a zillion other things your NAS can do. And Docker containers are pretty good about going between Windows, Mac, and Linux, and so a lot of people are developing them because they don't have to develop it just for Synology. Instead, they develop it for Docker, and it's almost certainly gonna work across whatever operating system you're actually using. Data Deposit Box, this is just third-party software that allows you to back up. I've never used it. DHCP Server, you probably do not want to be using this unless you really know what you're doing because it allows you to set up your NAS as a DHCP server, which is normally performed by your router. You should only do this if you're either tinkering on a closed network or really know what you're doing because you can end up with some very weird cases. DNS server is something that's actually very useful. DNS server allows you to set up your NAS as a DNS server. So this allows you to have customized domain names that point to local services on your network. And I will leave a link for how to do this in the description below. And it's got a lot of really cool features on it, though it's a little bit more advanced, so you need to know what you're doing before going into this. Document Viewer basically just adds an additional web interface for certain types of files from like Word documents and things like that. You can install it and test it out. I never really have gotten a lot of use case out of it, but if you're often using FileStation, it can be useful. Download Station is actually pretty useful. It's not just for torrents. Download Station allows you to download files to the NAS. So I've used this in a few cases where if I'm on the road and I've got really bad internet and I need to download a large file. So for example, there was a zip file of all my wedding photos. I just took the link and actually added it to my download station. And so it just all downloaded to my NAS at my house, which had much better internet than just being on the road. And so I knew it was there. So download station can be very useful and it allows you to download a lot of stuff. XFAT access, simple. It just allows you to have XFAT on your NAS. So that is a type of external drive format. And so you can pretty much just always add this in. And then when you plug in a drive that's formatted with XFAT, you are able to read and write to it. File station, most people should be familiar with. It really easily just allows you to see all of your files. Once again, installed by default, can't remove it and allows you to go through your files pretty easily. Git server is actually a package I probably would not recommend installing anymore. Git server allows you to run Git on your NAS as a repository, but it's SSH only. So instead of installing this Git server, I would recommend installing Git T via a Docker container. That way you can have a lot more flexibility and specifically use Git over HTTPS which is much better than just regular old SSH because it can be very annoying. Though in a pinch, this does just fine. Glacier Backup. Glacier Backup allows you to back up your NAS to a Glacier S3 bucket. I would not recommend using it in this package. I would instead recommend using Hyper Backup because Glacier is a, it's a beast unless you really know what you're doing. This is much more for archival than just a backup, so I would not recommend using this. It's got some bugs and can cost you a lot of money accidentally. Hybrid Share, another package you cannot uninstall. This allows you to use a C2 storage folder as a folder on your NAS. 
it essentially allows you to have that like hybrid where the data is not actually all on the NAS and it's downloaded on demand. Would probably not recommend this for most people. It could be useful for larger businesses, but still has some key limitations that keep it from being useful. Hybrid backup, you know I talk about this all the time on the channel. It allows you to back up your NAS to pretty much anything. So active backup for business allows you to back up anything to your NAS. Hyper backup allows you to back up your NAS to anything. And so it's great, but does have some caveats to it. Hyper backup vault allows you to turn your Synology into a destination for a backup. So say you've got two NASs, you're the NAS you want to back up and the NAS you want to be backed up to. You install hyper backup on the NAS you want to back up and hyper backup vault on the NAS you want to back up to. Jumala is a way you can set up websites and have a bunch of stuff. I've never used it. It seems to be somewhat similar to like WordPress or something like that. I've never used it, but it's one of those ways you can install a website on your NAS. Next up is LDAP server. If you don't know what LDAP is, it's essentially a way that you can sign in to a bunch of different stuff with a single username and password. So say you have 15 employees and 10 different servers that they need to be able to access. Instead of giving them an account on every single one of those servers, what you do is you just add them to the LDAP directory, and then you can just set up every single one of those servers to authenticate via LDAP. It can be very useful, but can also be kind of cumbersome to set up. I've got a tutorial on how to do that as well. Log Center is the more advanced version of the standard log center. And this allows you to do two things extra than the regular log center that's installed by default. It allows you to have automatic archival, which is very useful. And it also allows you to start receiving logs from other devices. So you can send logs to another NAS, or you can also receive logs using an open format, which is pretty awesome. It's actually pretty advanced. Next up is MailStation. MailStation allows you to send and receive emails from the NAS. So you install the mail server, and then MailStation allows users to log into their mail accounts on the NAS and actually be able to send and receive emails via web interface. MariaDB is a database. It's a MySQL drop-in replacement. And if you install that, you probably also want to install PHP MyAdmin. But if you're running a website or just need a database, MariaDB is awesome. Media Server. Media Server is an old package that allows you to put media on your network via DLNA. So DLNA is a protocol that's very old and essentially allows any device on the network to broadcast out, hey, I've got these photos, songs, or videos. Anybody can watch them. And so installing this means that anybody on your network can easily view any of the files in the audio, photo, or video folders. I think those are the three folders. So if you install it, just make sure you know what is allowed and what is not. But if you have a dumb smart TV and you want to be able to view some of your files on the NAS from that, you install media server and allow it with that. Media wiki, pretty simple. It allows you to build your own Wikipedia site or your own wiki pages locally. Migration assistant, underrated app. Migration assistant lets you very easily migrate from one NAS to another. So all you need to do is you spin up the new NAS, install your volume, and install Migration Assistant on the new NAS. And then you can essentially suck all the configuration from the old NAS to the new NAS and get up and running very quickly and very easily. Migration Assistant can be awesome. You install it on the new NAS. Next up are three nodes. So node.js is something that's used by websites. So you only use this if you're web hosting or some of these apps also use it. So for example, some of the web interfaces that Synology uses use node.js. Note station, if you wanna keep notes, you can set up this where it's essentially a pretty decent interface for having notes for every single one of the user accounts. So this allows you to just have your NAS be kind of a repository for notes. OAuth essentially allows you to turn your NAS into an OAuth2 server, which allows you to have kind of single sign-on and same sign-on for a bunch of different web servers and things like that, really used primarily for businesses or people who really wanna tinker. Not useful for most home users though. PAX, some media thing for doctors, no clue, but I assume if you've got a doctor's office, you may know about this and it's an open standard. Never used it, never had a client who ever used it. PDF Viewer gives you a web interface for PDF documents. Not that useful unless you need that, in which case it can be not bad. 
Next up, we've got Perl and the PHPs, the exact same thing as the nodes. They are used by websites and as well as internal applications that may use them. So these are generally only installed by applications or if you're running a website and it needs PHP 8.0, you can just say install that and use it in your profile. All right, so now after our PHPs and Perl, we have PHP My Admin. PHP My Admin pairs very nicely with MariaDB DB10, though you can also pair it to any other MySQL database. And what it allows you to do is it has a very nice, very easy to use web interface to understand what's in the database. So if you're administering a database and you need to add a new table or need to add a new user or anything like that, you can just log in with PHP My Admin and it's a beautiful web interface that's got a lot of easy to click things, way easier than actually trying to just command line add in everything there. PHP My Admin is awesome. Presto File Server. Presto File Server is very, very expensive, like thousands of dollars for a license or at least a few hundred dollars if you want slow. And what it is really specializing in doing is sending data over very long distances very quickly. So I'm talking about where you're in the United States and you need to send something to Asia over a high latency connection. Presto File Server is really kind of optimized for that, though it's very expensive for a license and it's very niche. It does not allow you to do everything that you would want to, but it's really designed as a way to ship massive files to users across a very long distance. Proxy Server allows you to set up your NAS as a proxy. This is not nearly as useful as it was because proxies kind of don't work that well when you've got HTTPS. So having a proxy is not nearly as useful, but you can still use it kind of as a relay, but not necessarily as a caching proxy. Next up, we got the new version of Python. This is once again, one of those things that is almost always just used by either your website if you're web hosting or one of the local applications here. Though once again, technically, just like Python 2, you can use it if you want to. Quick Connect, you're probably pretty familiar with this. Quick Connect allows you access. And so now they've brought it out of the actual just control panel to its own setting because this way it can be updated without having to update all of DSM. So it's been pulled out into its own section now. Radius Server, that's really used for authentication for things like Wi-Fi access points. So if you want people to not only need the Wi-Fi password, but also need to sign in with their account, so maybe you need to be able to audit and say exactly what person was doing what, you normally will do a radius server, and that way you can have your wireless access point. Once they connect, they have to log in with their username and password. Replication service is really just tied to snapshot replication, so we'll skip over that. Sand Manager, we already talked about. Secure Sign Service is another internal application that's just pulled out to the package center to make it easier to update. It's what allows auth on the NAS. And the exact same thing with SMB. SMB is how you've been signing into the NAS via Windows, File Explorer, Mac OS Finder. And this allows it to be updated separately than actual DSM. So this is great because it allows it, them to have much quicker updates and have updates more easily. Next up is SMIS Provider. It's something to do with Microsoft Virtual Machines. I've never had to use it, and I don't know anybody who has. It looks like it's just a plug and play storage interface for Microsoft Virtual Machines. Once again, never seen anybody who ever used it, never had to use it. Snapshot Replication, it's like beating a dead horse. I talk about it all the time on this channel. Phenomenal application, you should absolutely be using it. Allows you to take snapshots of your file system, which just kind of gives you an undo button for the entire file system. Really, really, really great. I've got a zillion videos on it. I'll leave a couple down in the description below. Check it out and install it and forget about it until you need it. Single sign-on server, SSO. This is similar to OAuth, allows you to use your NAS as a single sign-on server. So this is a little bit different than OAuth because this is single sign-on. So they sign in once and then across a bunch of different applications, your users never have to re-authenticate. You can use it for that, once again, really for internal businesses. Storage Analyzer, really great. It allows you to tell what's going on with your space. So you can run it, generate a task, and you can see a very nice pie chart about what every single folder is and how much space it's using. And it's also got things like deduplication and things like that. Really useful. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Synology Application Service, internal application used to update packages. Synology Calendar creates a WebDAV calendar it's got some weird bugs, 
But if you're looking to kind of have everybody use the calendar on there, you can use that though it does have some funky things associated with it and hopefully is getting cleaned up. Synology chat allows you to have a pretty basic chat server actually works pretty well. And Synology contacts does exactly what you expect. It adds contacts. It's actually pretty useful though. And I've seen a fair amount of people actually use them. Once again, if you're really bringing everything in house, your, your calendar chat and contacts, as well as your mail and everything can kind of be all hosted in house on one thing. Synology directory server, which is a Samba drop in replacement, well drop in replacement for a windows active directory server. So this allows you to essentially use active directory without having to pay the few thousand dollars a year for a windows active directory license because windows server is that expensive. So this can save it. It's not fully featured. It's the Samba version. It works. You can do a lot of stuff, but it's not going to be everything. But if you just need simple authentication, you should check this out for sure because it can just do that and it will work with pretty much most things. It's just once you try to do the more fully featured stuff and get kind of complicated, it falls apart. So then there's Synology Drive Server. You install this and it installs the three Synology Drive packages and this allows you to use Synology Drive on your NAS. Synology Drive is effectively a Google Drive replacement for that feel where you've got the web interface and you can sync files to your computer and things like that. Then Synology High Availability. This is an absolute sleeper application. It is awesome. I need to do a video on it. I just don't have two identical NASes. But what Synology High Availability does is it allows you to set up license-free high availability between two identical Synology NAS units. It means instantaneous failover, your NFS shares never technically go down. They can time out. It's like two seconds that they're down between. But if you need something with 99.9999, however many nines of uptime, Synology high availability can do that. You can literally do a distribution update. You can update the entire system and still keep 100% uptime because what you do is you just update the passive server while the active server is handling everything. And then once the passive server is done updating, you switch that to be the active server and now you update the new passive server and so they're both updated without losing any downtime very powerful so then there's synology mail server and synology mail plus server mail plus is just a more featured and licensed version of synology mail server this allows you to run a mail server on your synology nas would not recommend it unless you really know what you're doing just because getting mail delivered is very, very, very difficult in this day and age, unless you have a static IP address and can have a reverse proxy and a bunch of things like that. Synology Office allows you to have a very Google Drive feel to Synology Drive server. So this allows you to have Word and Excel documents effectively, all being able to be edited by the same users, very much how a shared document is in Google Drive. It's actually pretty decent in all honesty, and you can probably get away with it. Synology Photos allows you to back up and share photos with your devices. Really powerful package for photographers and also just home users who want to have access to their photos. Definitely something to check out if you like your photos. Text Editor, another one of those applications that allows you to edit text documents in DSM. Useful at times. Definitely something to throw on there if you're ever like web hosting and you just need to edit a couple of config files rather than downloading them or going to them, you can do that. Universal Search, already talked about. USB copy, actually really cool application that allows you to very easily copy files from a hard drive or to a drive. So you can just plug in a external hard drive or anything to the NAS and have it automatically back up the NAS or be able to back up the entire USB drive to the NAS. So say you have a really important thumb drive that you're always changing and things like that. You can have it set up. So every time you plug it into your NAS, it automatically copies all the data and backs up the entire USB drive. And then it beeps and injects the drive whenever it's done. So, you know, it's been backed up all without ever having to log into DSM. Video station is essentially a way that you can host videos on your NAS. So if you have a bunch of downloaded movies or anything like that, you can play them via video station. It's similar to Plex. It's a little clunky. doesn't, isn't perfect, but decent virtual machine manager. Awesome. Allows you to run virtual machines on your Synology NAS. So say you need to run a. Who knows, maybe a Windows server on your NAS. You can do that here. Note, you need a lot of RAM to do this generally. And if you're trying to run Windows, it can be quite slow. But if you're just spinning up a Linux virtual machine, it's actually really good. 
And the biggest downside of this is the actual power of the Synology unit, because this is probably the easiest to use virtual machine manager that I've ever come across. It works great. And I really wish they sold servers that were powerful for this specifically. VPN server allows you to turn your Synology into a VPN server for either OpenVPN, L2TP over IPsec, or PPoE. The vast majority of users will probably start using OpenVPN, but this allows you a very secure way to connect back to your home's network or your office's network. And so that way, the only port you have to expose is to the VPN server, which is about as secure as it gets because you also have multiple layers there. So even if the VPN gets compromised, you're not immediately compromised. And so it's essentially additive layers of security and a very secure way to get remote access to your NAS. VTiger CRM is open source CRM software, never used it. WebStation allows you to run web servers. So if you wanna run pretty much any website, you can do it on WebStation. And that's where a lot of those other like node.js packages are installed and used. WebDAV allows you to turn your NAS into a web DAV server, which is kind of like SMB, where you can mount it via Windows File Explorer and Mac OS Finder, but really designed for the internet. So if you just need people in the field to be able to access files from your NAS, web DAV is not bad. It's the easiest to set up, and especially for people who don't really know a ton, and they're just drag and dropping files, it's pretty easy to recommend, though it's not as fully featured as something like SMB or using a VPN server. Finally, WordPress. I actually don't recommend installing WordPress in this manner. Instead, follow my tutorial on how to install WordPress because you actually do it manually. And so you get much better control and you don't end up with these weird settings in there. And so it's a one click create WordPress, but then you're very limited from then on out. So I would not recommend using this. All right, so these are all of the official beta packages for the most part. Now we're gonna go into some of these third party packages and I'm gonna skip over some of these because the first few, I don't even know. Um, they look to be backup and stuff, but it's very specific applications that people have gone to send out to say, hey, we wanna be able to do this on your NAS. So a lot of them are backups or just specific things. MB server is gonna be very similar to Plex, is gonna be very similar to Video Station. It allows you to take videos that are stored on your NAS and play them on your phone, computer, whatever. So it is pretty standard and it is the open source version. iDrive, would not recommend iDrive. I've actually had bad experiences with users who come to me and say, hey, I need to restore from iDrive. It's really slow and kind of clunky. So I would not recommend using iDrive. I would recommend using something else. I generally recommend Hyper Backup or Cloud Sync. I would not recommend iDrive because I have had bad experiences with those. Code Explorer, not ever used it, some code manager. Bunch of stuff I have no idea what it is. Then we have Plex. Plex is going to be probably the most downloaded and installed application over here. Plex allows you to turn your NAS into a media server and it's got really great apps on all these different devices. And so it's probably one of the most installed apps out there. It does have the option for a Plex pass, which can either be a lifetime fee or a monthly fee if you want to get additional features. But Plex allows you to essentially take media on your NAS and play it just like Video Station or MB. Then Resilo Sync allows you to sync a folder on the NAS with another folder to a Raspberry Pi, to a Windows server, to a Mac, to anything. Resilo Sync works kind of cross platform with pretty much anything, and it actually works pretty decently. And then Tailscale allows you to have a very easy to set up and install VPN. So you can easily come back to your NAS without having to do any port forwarding or anything like that using the Tailscale account. Though it is a paid service, but the free account is probably good for most home users because you get a fair amount of devices, though you do use their servers. And so technically they could one day start charging you for that and cut down on the free server. And then TeamViewer and Virtual here, I mean, TeamViewer allows you to access the NAS apparently through your TeamViewer clients, never used it. And Virtual here apparently allows you to have your USB ports pass through, but that's it. That is every single one of the packages, at least the ones that I know about and know what they do on Synology NAS. I'm gonna go sit down and lay down and I'm never gonna do a video on the unofficial packages because well, that took a long time and I am out of breath. If you have any questions, I'm planning on doing a version of this where it is the actually useful ones that I would recommend people installing. But I've had a lot of people who want to know about all these different packages. And so that was my explanation of them. Go and leave any of their tutorials you like to see me make down in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.